everyone. Uh, today, uh, we are glad to connect on behalf of PCOS Awareness Month, and we have uh, today the expert, none other than Dr. Imrana Rahman, who is the leading gynecologist and obstetrician in Rahman Clinic and Nursing Home, uh, Bhagalpur. So uh, today, basically, we are going to address PCOS, which is, uh, you know, becoming one of the uh, pandemic, you can say, in uh, terms of, uh, you know, uh, lifestyle disorder in young girls and in reproductive age women. So today, ma'am will enlighten us with the uh, how to live with PCOS uh, and how to manage it. So welcome, ma'am. Good evening. So we'll start our de deliberations. Thank you. Welcome for the preparing a Sunday today. And away from the family, it's really, I'm honored. And at the same time, I'm really feeling sorry for those, all those who are, if it is a recorded one, it's fine. If they're away from the families, they're choosing me over them. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Ma'am, it's our pleasure to have you. And Hello. of course, we look forward uh, to have a lot of discussion on PCOS, being, you know, taking opportunity of PCOS Awareness Month, which is celebrated worldwide in the month of September. So, ma'am, to begin with, uh, we'll first, uh, you know, uh, the first initial yeah. question, uh, what is PCOS? You know, there are so many, uh, you know, uh, I can say myths about PCOS. So, how would you like to uh, clear these myths for the general public? So, PCOS is basically an endocrine and metabolic disorder in the women of the reproductive age group and is a common cause of infertility. It has a global prevalence of about 2.2 to 26%. And in India, it is affecting almost 36% of the women and they are suffering from PCOS. And uh, it affects your fertility, affecting your period in all the aspects of your appearance because uh, it may have acne, hirsutism, and uh, low self-esteem because of the appearance. And uh, it is also very draining in terms of uh, menstrual irregularity problems. So it can also affect uh, long-term health uh, implications it has. And uh, uh, so uh, in nutshell and the ovaries, uh, like when we do an ultrasound and there will be a typical PCO morphology of the ovary and we'll come to it. So it's a, uh, very common morbidity these days and uh, the symptoms can be very irregular periods. Maybe the patient may not, uh, may be amenoric. She may not have periods even for six months, four months, one year. So, and there can be increase in the body of the facial hair, loss of alopecia and, and the facial hair will be more and uh, there can be a baldness and male pattern baldness that she can be very overweight and uh, despite uh, controlling everything, the weight is not under her uh, control. And very oily, acne-prone skin and very uh, diffi finding difficulty if she is already married to get pregnant. Uh, and she can suffer from many female from the depression and psychological problems. However, these symptoms are very much overlapping. We need to find out which phenotype of the female she, which category she is uh, really into. And uh, and there may be um, there are many patients when they come to us that she is not having uh, periods for 24 months and again she's bleeding heavily. So that way, or she may widely distanced periods, uh, commonest. And uh, her suit sometimes they already come, uh, then we need to ask with, uh, with uh, like uh, already they have suffered some depilation or uh, they have removed their hairs. So we need to ask them uh, that have you gone an electrolysis or in the local, I mean, daily removal of hair on the face. And uh, she may suffer a lot of hair loss and overweight. So if she experience, she can increase in the typical pattern of the weight is they can get an apple and pears. So apple shape is the centripetal obesity, which is deposited on the abdomen and the uh, uh, trunks that way and uh, uh, 
body weighs circumference is more than 88 centimeter. So the normal BMI, which we have is between 20 to 25. If it is above to above that, then it can be overweight above 25 to 27. If it is more than 30, then it becomes obese. So BMI is a calculation between the weight by height into square. So that way we determine the BMI is very important uh, uh, calculator in this and everybody should be aware of this. And she may have repeated episodes of acne, uh, acne form uh, proliferations on the face and eruptions. And uh, this is how uh, the patient comes to us and mostly with the menstrual irregularities. Right, ma'am. Uh, so, ma'am, there is some confusion between, you know, polycystic ovarian syndrome and polycystic ovaries. So, how do we, you know, just uh, uh, get the difference right in our mind? So, uh, polycystic ovary is the part of the polycystic ovarian syndrome. So, all women, uh, like in the young patients very young adolescent age group, we cannot assign any young adolescent female between uh, when she has uh, started her uh, periods for the first time, that is menarche. And by ultrasound, we diagnose polycystic ovaries. There are small, small cysts of about 2 to 10 millimeters, which are arranged peripherally in the ovary with the peripheral repartition and increased in the ovaries become enlarged in size. So volume is very important to be considered and the volume is more than 10 or 12 cubic millimeters. So the, the ovaries, ovaries looks pearly and it looks like an egg and uh, very voluminous ovaries are there on an ultrasound. And uh, the small, small cyst follicles are arranged at the periphery and there is increase in the stromal thickness on the ultrasound. But in the case of adolescence, since uh, after menarche, uh, eight years post menarche, we can assign her ovaries to be polycystic, whether because there are different, uh, they are suffering from a uh, lot of anovulation problems. The hypothalamic pituitary axis doesn't start functioning initially, immediately after menarche. So it might give a false uh, pattern of the polycystic or a multifollicular kind of ovary. And uh, it might take two years for the HPO axis to settle down and uh, produce a normal uh, pattern. And importantly, uh, only 30% of the cases are picked up by a transabdominal ultrasound because we cannot do an ultrasound in the uh, young females. It's uh, um, um, by a transvaginal probe. So uh, in, it has got a 100% sensitivity with the transvaginal probe and only 30% with transabdominal. So we have to be very careful. Rather, we can go for a volume determination. So it has got multiple cyst is lodged at the periphery of the ovary and not. Or, so we have got a Rotterdam criteria. So this criteria, it uh, was... Uh, now we have Androgen Access Society. They have also laid down criteria and uh, NIHS. So, um, which says uh, that two of, uh, which says there are three things to assign a woman of a, uh, to a polycystic ovarian syndrome. The criteria are uh, to have uh, irregular periods and a biochemical uh, determination of high androgen levels, which can be testosterone, androstenedione, which have to be um, higher, and biochemical uh, parameters, uh, or, which is reflected in terms of uh, increased acne, increased hirsutism, more of facial hair, male pattern baldness, acanthosis, nigricans, all these things, these are uh, some direct pointer towards an hyperandrogenemia. So the signs of hyperandrogenemia should be there and uh, uh, menstrual irregularity and PCO morphology on the ovary.